This is the Battle of Kettle Run JNP mod. So I put the two points into training, which takes me to three. And I'm going to do the $120,000. I think there was a purchase of um, 20 pound parrots. So I was very busy. I broke down my my very good unit of Napoleons and I made all of this stuff. A whole bunch of two star and three star. Look at this. Uh, 24H. These are all three star. 20P. James. 20P. Siege guns. So yeah. I really like the Napoleon but I would rather have siege guns, 20p, so on. Over here, I have 12 Whitworths. They're a three star, um, 12 Whitworths, eight guns. I brought over some, um, some guns that are going to need some XP. So Grant should get his second star, and then he can become a core commander. So I broke down a good infantry unit, a eh, good unit, not so good unit, and poured them into the infantry. And that's because scaling is kind of weird in this battle. It, it kind of tops out. So these guys all need some more experience, so I'm bringing them. I'm not bringing my best guns. Bringing the Whitworth for an obvious reason. Particularly the 24H needs another battle to get the third three after the name. Putting everybody in the army uh, does something, um, it, it actually drove down scaling, which I didn't care about, but the, the raw recruits that I get after this battle will be, I think, 17. 17? Yeah, I think 17. Okay, 200, almost $300,000. We're going to get another 100000 We can bring nine units. Pretty straightforward battle. I want I wanted three units to fire canister. Oh, I reperked my artillery for accuracy. No more shot and shell on anybody. Everybody's perked for accuracy. I, I've kind of figured out it doesn't make any difference. And that's going to be changed in the next version of the mod, but it, it doesn't make any difference. And and the the benefit of going accuracy is it affect it affects all three distances. Uh, and, and including um, max range. So I guess you could say all four distances. In other words, no matter where you shoot and at what range, accuracy applies. So if you do shot and shell, then it only applies to shot and shell range. So, but the net effect is the same. So, okay, so getting my army into position and obviously the the Whitworth is here to take out the enemy artillery, and there's a spot on the top of the hill. The Whitworth is very slow getting into place. The Napoleons and the 24H are all horse artillery, and they are very, very fast and get into place with no difficulty. In fact, the, the horse artillery is faster than my infantry. So yeah, the idea was because making these units a bit larger than usual doesn't affect scaling very much. I mean, after all, I did have units of, um, you know, 4,000 in my army driving up scaling. But, but oddly, like I said, it drove scaling down. So anyway, I'm taking these units up to, what are they, 2,400 well, I took them to 2,500, and then I break off detached skirmishers. And the point is they will be able to bleed down before second bull run. That's the whole point. I thought about bringing in the James, but my thought was, because then the James would be also very good in battle, but I, I think my James already has three stars, so it didn't. It was kind of a wash. Of course, the downside of the Whitworth is ammo cost. This thing is very expensive on ammo, and so is my 24H. My 24H is very expensive on ammo, but uh, I really wanted to get that officer his third 
Um, he, uh, three after his name. And after this battle, I think the 24H will probably need just one more battle to get his third unit perk. So if if you watch uh, Panda Kraut do this battle, you can... It is possible to play this battle with more artillery and more long-range artillery and snipers. But I am more focused on getting units leveled up. So I want these guys... See what they're doing right now? Everybody's firing. And the canister is making these is making this unit route, and that's what we're going to do. This is this is my style of play. Is the, you know the infantry is there. You move forward a little bit. You move the artillery forward. You fight the next round. Rinse and repeat. Just artillery, infantry, moving together, combined arms, take the enemy out. The the Whitworth has such incredible range, and the Whitworth does consistent damage at every range that this gun can pretty much just sit on the top of this hill and fire the entire battle. Now there, there is kind of a blind spot so I'm gonna have to move him once but the idea of placing him here was put him on a hilltop where he can just fire all day and I think this battle ends at 1030 so I could have like really tried to get the maximum amount of time out of this, but I mean, you have to make a decision. Do I want to get captures or do I just want to drag it out as long as possible? Or do I, you know, you can't do everything. You can't get max captures and max time on the battlefield. You have to decide. So I want captures for the weapons. Obviously, these guys have Lorenzes. So I want captures. I want, um, XP, but I don't want to exchange time on the battlefield and and give up captures. So that's what I'm going to do. So he got a split on the skirmisher units in the north, but I had I'd already decided to send an infantry unit and a bunch of my detached skirmishers up there to kill those two. Unfortunately, one of them escapes. And down here, this is going just perfectly. Now, I have to hit pause and make sure everybody's firing, because did you? it happened pretty fast, but half of my units are targeting someone in the back. So you have to hit pause, make sure everyone's targeting the guy who's coming in for the charge, or they'll try to get a shot on, a, on someone who's on the other ed, end of the map. It's really stupid, and you have to micromanage it, but if you do it right... And then I had my two-star unit run up and also put a shot in on this guy. And everyone's just harvesting XP on this guy. So, could not be better. Now another guy's coming in. We need to shift fire. Yeah, basically two infantry on every guy who comes forward and concentrate all of the firepower in the world. We have 20 minutes to take the victory location. That's not as close as it looks. But I'm, I'm moving slowly just to make sure that um, the artillery is, is in support. I'm not going to just run forward and take the flag. We can take our time. Yeah, this little 157 is really annoying. Put that infantry unit on run. The other two, there's a tiny skirmisher in the corner I have to like the idea is one skirmisher be in front and the other get on the flank and route him and then he's just flashing white yep everybody hit the guy in the front make sure everybody's firing
Now I could keep the guy in the south alive to maximize my time on this battlefield, but I'm I'm not I'm not gonna fiddle with it. Okay, twelve minutes to go, we take the flag. He's charging uphill. This could not be better. And he is within range of exploding shell. Two of my guns. So he's very, very doomed. And I lost visibility of... Even with my infantry on run, I lost visibility of... Um, of that skirmisher, unfortunately. Yeah, look at, look at him just walking up and just getting just pounded. Oh, I perked... Um, is, is my two-star perked for... I'm going to start perking my infantry, I think, for accuracy, I think. I'm trying to think of any battles where you just really want more speed. I, I think I'll... All of my core... Yeah, there I found a skirmisher. So we'll put these two units on killing him. And that was the job of the infantry at the top. And the, on the, in the south, there's plenty of killing power here to kill what is left. And when I'm ready, we'll just charge in. It's only 6 o'clock. I think we have 4 hours and 15 minutes to go. So, no reason to be in a rush. Just get everybody in position. Shattered. Yeah. Uh, the guy in the south, shattered. Notice the Whitworth is still, still hitting this guy with shots. So he's real slow, but once he got into place, he can just fire and fire and fire. I had to move him a little bit, had to adjust him when we started this attack. Yeah, his little unit of skirmishers in the corner. He's dead. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get everybody into position, get ready for the final charge. I can see that he is he's down now to, yeah, 2,900. That's two units. So get everybody into position. We have four hours. I turned off the supply wagon because there's no reason to not. Also, if the Whitworth runs out of ammo, that doesn't matter at all either. He can just fire for free. And he already has his third unit perk, so that doesn't matter. Twenty eight hundred. Now I can see both units. Oh, he's twelve hundred. He's gonna. I have one, two, three, four, five infantry are gonna hit him. Don't even need the artillery. He's gonna rout almost right away. Yep, there he goes. Okay, let's go ahead and charge. Should have had one unit charge the guy in front. And I'm going to send the detached skirmisher to get the ammo wagon. Just get the ammo wagon, buddy. Okay, there he goes. See, I, I needed somebody to target the second unit, so everybody just walk on top of him. Yep, and we got the ammo wagon. And the, um, the second unit surrendered. I don't know if that counts. Six, seven... Over 7,000, I lost 500. Yep, 7,000. Over 7,000, lost 500. That was pretty cool. Yeah, the Whitworth, no surprise. So, Lorenz, Lorenz, Lorenz. The 24H did as well as the Lorenz units. Artillery did fine. And Grant, that's big. Now I can move Grant into core command, which is exactly what I want. He had Lorenz's, Burnside's, Sharp's carbine, and $7,300 worth of ammo. Yeah, happy day.
That was a good outcome. Happy with that. His units were a lot of three stars there. Okay, so these guys have efficiency of 17. Very good. I'll make units out of those. And, and the whole goal of putting points into training is to that my green units come in, fight one battle, get their first unit perk. That's the goal. Fighting three battles to get your first unit perk is, and that's agonizing. Time to move on. One battle, get your first unit perk. I can fight the rest of the campaign with infantry that has one unit perk. Grant, happy to see it. You are now the commander of First Corps. Accuracy and accuracy. Okay, we have 400,000. He got just recruits, 51, 41, 39. That is perfect. Boy, that's really good. And after winning that battle, Thoroughfare Gap will get a reduction in army size of some tiny amount. Not much. 2.5. Okay. Obviously, I need more space to put more units. Yeah, everything went perfectly. Everything went... My artillery didn't lose any men. And... Yeah, that's very good. He has a 3 after his name. He's still a little underpowered. He's been kind of underpowered the whole time, just a little bit. But not by much. I think it's by one point now that he has a three next to his name. And, and yeah, if we get a better division commander, we'll be fine. So, yeah, it, it looks good. Their army looks good, good size. These guys are going to fight in the next battle, bleed down a little bit. want to get my two star up higher then break him down and you know make a lot more make more units of artillery infantry or artillery snipers cav that's really good 17 17 is excellent and i think the next point will also go into training then maybe we'll get units of 19 and then easily they should be able to... Uh, what you do is you bring them in with a three-star commander to give them the point, and then you put a captain in charge so that if they go up in ability during a battle, during a multi-phase battle like Second Bull Run, they will the perk will activate, if that makes sense. So that's what we're going to do, and I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time.